video also, I would like to explain you regarding the gate question and its solution. This question which I am taking is based on distortion energy theory. So distortion energy theory is nothing but basically the distortion energy of the loading case if it is equal to or more than distortion energy of the uniaxial loading case of the same material then the material will fail. And for that loading case the distortion energy formula is given like this. SYT is equal to given by 1 by 2 of it is not the distortion energy formula. In fact the uh, the relation which we get by equating distortion energy of uniaxial loading case on the le left side with distortion energy of our loading case. So we will be getting it as sigma 1 minus sigma 2 whole square plus sigma 2 minus this will come outside here whole square sigma 1 minus sigma 3 whole square. If you are writing in terms of stress components, it will come as SYT is equal to square root of half of sigma x minus sigma y whole square, sigma y minus sigma z whole square plus sigma x minus sigma z whole square plus 6 of tau xy square tau yz square tau xz square. So this is the equation. <coughs> okay. Now, let's read out the question and understand how to apply this formula there. Consider the two states of stresses as shown in the figure 1 and 2. From the standpoint of distortion energy theory or warm edges criteria, which one of the following statements is true? So, we have to compare the distortion energy of these two loading cases and we should say which one will yield first. So, basically, we will find the energy. Okay, so the failure will happen when the particular loading case energy will be equal to the distortion energy of uniaxial loading case. So, which one is having higher distortion energy that will yield first, right? So, let's get the value of distortion energy using this formula in both the cases. If you take the diagram given in the question, so first loading case is like this, that is having sigma in only y direction. And we have tau like this. This is the first case. If we take the second case, it is tau in this way, and this is sigma. It is a second loading case. Okay. Now, we need to know these values. Then only we can evaluate these, uh, we can substitute in the formula and get the answer. If you are taking this quadrant system, for the first loading case, this is nothing but sigma y. And this is nothing but tau, it is acting on y plane. Look here, sorry, z plane. z is like this. So, tau ij means i is plane on which it is acting or basically the plane name and j is direction. If you take this one, this is acting on a plane whose normal is along z axis. So, z will come. So, i value is z but it is acting along y direction. So, y is what here? j. So, <coughs> so j is actually y here. So, you having tau z y is equal to tau. Remaining all other parameters are 0. In the same way, if you write down for the second case, this is anyways sigma y and this one is tau z x acting on z plane along x direction. So, tau z x is equal to tau. But another arrow mark is there which is actually for the component tau x z acting on x plane along z direction. Because the plane is having its normal along x direction here. So, tau x z is equal to how much? It is not known to us. But tau z x, tau x z both are same. So, we are getting it as tau itself. So, you substitute these values in this particular equation and get the value of right hand side of this equation. You are going to get right hand side of both the cases going to be same. So, you will get the final answer as that means right hand side equation as square root of sigma square plus 3 tau square.
So you are going to get the values as sigma square plus 3 tau square. That's the value there. Understand? So, our, as you are getting right hand side to be same uh, for the both the loading cases, that means distortion energy induced by the applied loads on the both the members on the both the loading cases is same. So, as distortion energy is same, both have equal probability of failure. So, both will yield simultaneously. Got it? If any one of them is having higher, that would have been the answer to this question. Clear? So, this is how you have to solve this question. You have to remember this formula, otherwise you can't solve this question this much easily. Kindly make sure to remember this formula. So, distortion G, these two are the formulae which you have to remember. Kindly make sure you are not forgetting to remember or recapture this formulae or revising this formulae before going to get examination. Thank you so much everyone.